He was more than vocal about protecting his characters and stories from exploitation. Before Dr. Zeus would publish over 60 books, including Cat in the Hat, Green Eggs and Ham, Horton hears the who and more. Meet thing one and thing two. The classic tale comes to life. Before Dr. Zeus would have seven of his books be made into feature films, including How the Grinch Stole Christmas and Cat in the Hat. You're the, 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 the Grinch. Jim Carrey is. The Grinch. Before Dr. Zeus would effectively be cancelled in 2021 with at least six of his books, including If I Ran the Zoo and the lesser known McElligot's Pool. There were images and references considered racist. It harms people, it disadvantages people, it tells people who is foreign. His rhymes and characters are beloved by generations of fans, or at least they were. If you think the visuals and poetry that he popularized in the Dr. Zeus books is problematic, well, it was a big improvement from his first crack at children's literature, which was a collection of books titled, well, wait for it, Boners. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Researching this video, it turns out your boy Dr. Zeus was a bit of a party animal himself. The son of a brewmaster, I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. He also had a long checkered past of creating racist advertisements and political cartoons and even performed in blackface when he was in college. We, we got a lot to get through. What's poppin' guys, your boy Marlon Palmer back at it again with a brand new Before They Were Gone video. Our most recent entry in this series include the breakup of Daft Punk, so please go and check that out on our channel. And let's get into this video. Theodore Zeus Gazell, better known by his pen name Dr. Zeus, Gazell was born on March 2, 1904 in Springfield, Massachusetts. His father, Theodore Robert Gazell, was a successful brewmaster, so money wasn't ever really an issue for the family, it was of German descent. In multiple reports about his early years, various publications referred to him as being a loner. Like his father, Ted would keep his deepest feelings to himself. A loner by nature, his closest friend growing up was his sister Marnie. He grew up with a zoo near his house, which he would visit every Sunday, and he found an early love for art and illustration. When he was 12 years old, World War I broke out, which caused national resentment for Germans in America. Schoolmates often called him that drunken Hun. He would never forget it. At age 18, Gazelle left home to attend Dartmouth College, where he became the editor-in-chief of its humor magazine, jack o -Lantern. But of course, that is a place where you get to write pretty much anything you want, within reason. It was a place for him to write nonsense verse and to do ridiculous cartoons. When Gazelle and his friends were caught drinking in his dorm room, a bootleg bottle of gin during Prohibition, he was kicked off the magazine staff, but continued to contribute to it using the pseudonym Zeus. He was also said to have performed in a minstrel show in blackface, which is always a Always a great idea, bro. After graduating from Dartmouth College, Seuss made the trip to England where he attended the University of Oxford, and his initial plan was to become a professor. But it was there that he met his future wife, Helen Palmer. The couple married in 1927, and he dropped out of Oxford and the two moved back to the United States that same year. Seeing as he dropped out of Oxford, that's got me wondering if he really is in fact a doctor. I highly doubt it. Upon returning to America, Seuss decided to pursue cartooning full-time. His articles and illustrations were published in numerous magazines, including Life and Vanity Fair. A cartoon that he published in the July 1927 issue of the Saturday Evening Post landed him a staff position at the New York Weekly Judge. Seuss next worked for Standard Oil in the advertising department, where he spent the next 15 years. His ad for Flit, a popular incesticide, became nationally famous. It was around this time that he also drew scores of racist ads and political cartoons that included racial slurs and that depicted black people as savages in grass skirts. There were also Asian people with slits for eyes and Middle Eastern characters wearing turbans and riding camels. Some of his early work is on display in various museums, but I got a feeling that they're gonna need to go back and clean up some of the pieces they have on display. The show covers his initial career and advertising, his trip through the world of political cartoons, but it focuses on the books he began writing close to 50 years ago. Not a good look, fam. It's not it's just not a good look. Around this time, Viking Press offered Seuss a contract to illustrate a children's collection called Boners. 
Surprise, surprise, the book sold poorly, but it gave him a break into children's literature. At the start of World War II, Seuss began contributing weekly political cartoons to the liberal publication PM Magazine. In 1942, too old for the draft, Seuss served with Frank Capra's Signal Corps, making animated training films and drawing propaganda posters for the Treasury Department and the War Production Board. Following the war, he and Helen purchased an old observation tower in La Jolla, California, where he would write for at least eight hours a day, taking short breaks only to tend to his garden or enjoy a vodka on the rocks. Previously, when I did just kids' books, I would be invited every morning to go to have cocoa among the kindergarten set. Now I get invited to have martinis at old folks' homes. <laughs> Where would you rather be? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in between, not only. Anyway. He never had any children of his own, but instead spent the next five decades producing children's literature. He settled on a writing style for his books and using a simplified vocabulary and more elaborate illustrative techniques from his early years. Speaking on his style, he stated, I don't write for children, I write for people. Once a writer starts talking down to kids, he's lost. Kids can pick up on that kind of thing. His first book, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street, was rejected 27 times before it was finally published in 1937. Over the course of his career, Dr. Seuss published more than 60 books, including Horton Wears a Who in 1954, The Cat in the Hat in 1957, How the Grinch Stole Christmas in 1957, which would be adapted into a Christmas special, increasing his notoriety immensely. Green Eggs and Ham in 1960, Dr. Seuss, ABC, an amazing alphabet book in 1963, The Lorax in 1971, and If I Ran the Zoo in 1950, which at the time won multiple awards, but today they are becoming famous for a whole bunch of other reasons. If you don't know the scandal, well, books including If I Ran the Zoo have details of a young boy imagining a hunting expedition to the fictional land of Zambamata, where locals wear their eyes at a slant. Other pages also show the African island of Yerk, featuring squat African tribesmen with large hoops through their noses, Chinese men who eat with sticks. All in all, six Dr. Zeus books, and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street, If I Ran the Zoo, McElligot's Pool, Ambiance Zebra, Scrambled Egg Super, and The Cat's Quizzer would all stop being published because of insensitive imagery that portray people in ways that are hurtful and wrong. I certainly understand that there are um, images and expressions and words and stories and books, particularly books that have been written in the past, that, that we do find. Growing up as a kid, I knew something was wrong with these books, so I, for one, am happy they are being discontinued. Dr. Zeus died on September 24th, 1991, at the age of 87, at his home in La Jolla, California. Although it would take 20 years before this legacy would be tarnished, the scandal one must imagine is his name and properties were mighty lucrative for his estate. As for the rest of the story, well, I'm gonna wrap this one up here because this is before they are gone. Do you guys think that there's anything wrong with the stories in those books? Were you guys offended by any of the stories in the books? Let me know in the comment down below and I'll see you guys next video. Bye.